Hey guys, welcome back to another Default Cube CG Matter tutorial, and I don't mean to toot my own horn here, but uh, this tutorial is about to change the whole Blender landscape as you know it. Uh, you can hang up this tutorial proudly on your fridge because we're going to be talking about displacement, but uh, proximity-based displacement. So there's this falloff uh, based on our controller that I made here, and I'm going to teach you how to do this. It's completely three-dimensional, completely procedural in some sense. I guess in all senses it's procedural, and this is a nice thing because uh, normally this kind of thing requires animation nodes, and I'm going to show you how to make it without it. And we're actually going to have some additional controls like... I have this uh, value node here, which happens to control this fall off. So if I make this smaller, it's actually going to increase the fall off. So now you can see it's more intense. If I make it bigger, like 0.7, it's going to have a very small effect until we get uh, high enough that it barely has any effect at all. So I'm going to teach you how to make this node network in Vanilla Blender. No animation nodes are required. And that is why I'm so excited to show you this, because really it's going to change the game. So first of all, let's set up our displacement in the normal way, which I'm not going to spend too much time explaining. So first of all, default cube subdivided control four to add a subsurf with a level four divisions. I'm going to apply that. And uh, this is material displacement, by the way, um, not the displacement modifier, which means for now we have to use cycles until they make Eevee uh, use material displacement, which would be nice. But for now, that's not the case. Make sure that you enable experimental because we are going to be using adaptive subdivisions. Adaptive, which means that it's going to subdivide according to how much geometry we need, which is better than just, you know, hitting subdivide a bunch of times until your computer crashes. So adaptive, make sure that's the case. And now for our displacement, we're just going to use this material, which I'm going to call whatever I want. I am, I'm hilarious. I'm a comedy god. Um, Okay, cool. And how do we set up our displacement? Well, we just use a displacement modifier, or no, not a modifier, a node. You probably already know how to set this up anyways. You just care about the proximity. And for this displacement, for the height, you can use whatever you want. I'm using a noise texture. You can use a, a musgrave, a wave texture, a texture texture. I don't care. Take this, plug it into the height. Boom, you have displacement. But of course, uh, any experienced veteran of Blender will know that we have an issue here, and that is that our displacement is bump in this case, right? It has the shading effects so that reacts to lighting. If I can find my light source, it reacts to lighting, but it doesn't actually have geometry-based displacement, which means that this is a lie. So to fix this, Material tab, Displacement, Settings, and change this from bump only to either displacement only, which is fine, or displacement and bump, which covers all our bases. So that's what we're going to be doing. Okay, cool. Let me move this slide away. It's way too intense. Okay, so now our displacement is geometry based, and I'm just going to do one or two things. First of all, mid level zero. And then second of all, we're going to increase kind of the scale of this to have it be more detailed. Although maybe I went a bit too intense there. Something like 10 with uh, more detail. Okay, cool. So now we have this rocky displacement. And now the question is, how do we modify this so that it's based only on some fall off or proximity to some object? Well, the way you do this, it's actually very simple. Uh, you add a gradient texture. You set it to either a quadratic sphere. Took me a second to find that. A quadratic sphere or spherical. Basically, we want a radial uh, type, but not literary radial, just a circular type of fall off. Um, so either of these are fine. I'm going to use quadratic sphere since it has a bit of a nicer, you know, X squared type of uh, fall off. Doesn't matter. Um, next, we're going to add some texture coordinates to this, which you can either do by hitting control T if you have node wrangler enabled. Uh, if you don't, uh, you're, you're, you're missing out, but you can do this manually mapping node. I'm just doing what I did before without the hotkey and then texture coordinates and make sure to set this to object. So object coordinates to mapping to gradient texture. And when we view this, when we view this, you know, kind of looks like nothing, which is fine. What we're going to be doing is using these object texture coordinates with a different object, for example, an empty, which is going to be our controller. So uh, back in the material, select this empty. And you can see that right now, this fall off is already working, right? It's basically uh, casting our quadratic sphere depending on the object coordinates of this uh, relative to the sphere. Okay, cool. So now we have this uh, white in some areas, black in others, which is cool, I guess, but doesn't actually affect our displacement. So how do we take this and this and somehow combine them? Think about it. That's right. You just take a, a math node, set it to multiply, 
make sure both of these are inputs. And then we need to make sure we have some BSDF in here so stuff is actually shown. And then you can see, I mean, I guess you can't see it's already working, but that's just because it's not close enough. So we just bring it a bit closer and then you can see that it's within the range, proximity, fall off, whatever you wanna call it. And we can just start moving this around. And you may be thinking, okay, fine, but I have no idea why this works. Well, basically everything we did here, if we just visualize it, if we just visualize it, just creates a, a noise texture that also uses this quadratic sphere thing we made. And that's gonna be our displacement map. That's just the reason why it works. So let's put a BSDF in here. Okay, cool. Um, this means that, again, this is a completely procedural approach since you can move this and you know it's based on a noise texture, but um, you can still change the details of this. So if we set this very low, now we have a very smooth kind of displacement. Um, you can also change the detail in all this. Uh, but the other thing you might want to know is how do I control this fall off? Like if it's, whoops, if the empty is over here, uh, what if I still want it to affect it? Like what if I want a larger fall off or proximity? Well, basically we just need to affect these texture coordinates to fix that. In fact, uh, the scale. An easy way to do this is take a value node and connect it. Now, the smaller you make this, kind of the bigger the scale is, it's kind of a reciprocal relationship, meaning if it's very small, now, the proximity, the, the range, the fall off is very large, meaning I can go very far away and it still affects it. But if I go to the center, it's going to kind of affect it everywhere. And by the way, we've made a kind of cool asteroid or rock generator uh, this way. Or if you set this very large, it's going to have a very weak fall off and you have to get really close, uh, which might be what you want. Okay, fine. Uh, let's take it up a notch. What if you want uh, two empties? I didn't plan for this, but we're just, we're just gonna do it. What if you want two empties? Well, you just kind of take uh, what we've done so far and just duplicate it really. So take this, duplicate it, and then this time, instead of uh, the empty, we're gonna use the second empty. So empty two, fine. Uh, but how do we integrate all this together? Well, uh, before we multiply everything, which is kind of the final step, uh, we just need to consider both of these together. So another math node. Set this one to add, which it is by default, and just plug in factor, color, doesn't really matter. Boom. And now you have two controllers. Yeah, you, this is why you got to be excited for this tutorial. You're not getting this on Grant Ebbett's channel. Sorry, Grant. And yeah, you could do this for however many empties you want. And uh, I guess one more thing to mention is, you know, the, you know, it's fall off based, but if you move the sphere, Again, it's relative to these, so it's gonna change, and that's not necessarily what we want. We wanna be able to move the objects and then um, affect it with our empties. So we kinda want them to move together. So take the empty, take the sphere, control P, object, that's parenting it by object, and then same thing over here. Again, that's control P. And now when we move this, it kinda moves together, meaning that in terms of you know displacement, it stays the same, but we can then uh, move it change the displacement locally, depending on where it is, instead of uh, globally, is the way you want to think about it. So there you go. Uh, you now know how to do this awesome effect. You're welcome. No animation nodes required. Um, if you enjoyed this tutorial, this free tutorial, I may add and want to support me uh, making more of these for free. The best way to do that is via Patreon. I appreciate anybody who has the means to and wants to donate there, but you do get benefits. So you are kind of buying something. But anyways, check out my Patreon if you care. Other than that, I've been CG Matter Default Cube. You've been you. And uh, this is a rock.